welcome to BBC News live from our studios overlooking the Olympic Park in London. I'm Kasia Madeira coming up in this program. The London Olympics have opened with an extraordinary ceremony full of colour and the best kept secret of the night. The cauldron was lit by seven young athletes. Showcasing the best of British music, five decades of songs are celebrated from Mersey Beat to East London Grime. History in the making, the Industrial Revolution was also a theme. Actors forged Olympic rings and chimney stacks appeared in the arena. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, with a little help from Bond, a Queen Elizabeth lookalike drops in to open the games. Hello and a very warm welcome to you from our studios overlooking the Olympic Park in Stratford where the opening ceremony of the 2012 Olympics has just ended with a parade of athletes from the 204 nations participating in the Games. The evening's proceedings started with a dramatic, humorous and musical celebration of British history and culture, masterminded by the Oscar-winning director Danny Boyle. In one extraordinary sequence, the Queen appeared to parachute out of a helicopter accompanied by the James Bond actor Daniel Craig. It's thought the three-hour event was watched by an estimated one billion people worldwide, including 80,000 people inside the Olympic Stadium. And the Olympic Cauldron has been lit by a group of promising young athletes after the flame was carried into the stadium by Sir Steve Redgrave, who'd been handed it from a speedboat on the Thames by David Beckham. So all the speculation as to who would light the cauldron answered by the fact that it was seven young people, young athletes, representing the future lighting the cauldron with that special task. Well, we can actually speak to someone who took part in the opening ceremony. Porik Dempsey, you were there. How on earth did you feel? It was the most fantastic experience to be there. It truly was. I mean, something I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Um, to be there in the middle of the stadium, to see as you described, the chimneys coming out of the ground with the Industrial Revolution section was just, an, was just incredible. And while we were waiting in the entrance areas, while the earlier part was going on, we could hear the crowd. We could anticipate whenever we were coming on, and the tension, the excitement was just building up. And you were actually one of the dockers representing the wind rush uh, period of what yes. has been a whole historical look through the UK, hasn't it? Oh, it's been tremendous. There's been so much happening out there. You've seen people representing the Jaro Marchers, um, Suffragettes, Pearly Kings and Queens, Notting Hill Carnival, all kinds of things out there. It's been What's the word I use? The phantasmagoria? Is that the right word to use? <laughs> Something like that. A kaleidoscope of colour and sound and any kind of word like that. It's just so fantastic. And as you can imagine, it was so... It takes such a huge effort to coordinate it. And make sure everything worked clockwork. And I think it did. Let's cross over to Amadeep Bangu. You are the BBC's Olympic reporter. You've been covering this since the day that London first found out that it was successful in winning the bid. What do you make of... How far we've come from that day? Well, the one word that describes this evening is phenomenal. <laughs> we need to applaud Porik, and he's just one of the many 10,000 volunteers that made tonight such a success. Danny Boyle's vision, I'd be surprised if he failed on any category in any critic's eyes. He managed to just pull it off tonight. Culture, history, a journey through Britain's musical past. The firework display was absolutely out of this world. There really isn't anything that we can criticize him for. He pulled off that feat that many critics said was a bit of a poison chalice. How does one depict British national identity on a scale of this kind? Um, but tonight he achieved it. And of course, he had such a tough act to follow because we remember so vividly the Beijing 2008 
opening ceremony where we had those 2008 drummers simultaneously bashing away. You didn't have to do that, Porik. Instead, you were part of what was just a revolution in its own right. It was... I don't know quite how to describe it. <laughs> it's one of these things, I'm sorry to say, it's one of these things you have to be there to experience it. Um, a revolution. So much territory was covered in there. So much is covered up the whole thing. And then there were so many elements we didn't expect ourselves. Um, like, for example, the lighting of the cauldron. We didn't even know what the cauldron looked like. So you didn't know, so you weren't privy to that no. information because that was one of the no. best held secrets. No. I know Danny Ball was very keen to save the secret, even that hashtag yeah. appearing on the micro social blogging site Twitter. Yeah. But um, you were not even aware of that. It wasn't even shown during rehearsals. I believe wow. we rehearsed this week, not at all. So it was extraordinary to see that. And of course, the firework display, as you say, incredible. And, those, and the lights, the whole thing was just brilliant to me. It was like something you could never really imagine how, how much it would develop like that. It was like, obviously, from, taking, from the rehearsals I've been in, from the part I, I was in, you see some of what went on. But that was like the early part of the show, to just the revolution side of it. And when we come off, we see the NHS nurses and the kids come on, and we saw from early rehearsals a part of their act. Um, so we knew a little bit what to expect after us, but beyond that, not a great deal. And Amandeep, what do you make? Because some of it was very quirky, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, the whole sequence with the Queen making her acting debut. How on earth does a director like Danny Boyle get everyone to participate in something like this? Well, he pulled it off tonight. There was fact mixed with fiction. Daniel Craig, actor playing James Bond, walking into the Buckingham Palace, welcomed no other, by no other than Her Majesty the Queen. And, of course, the element of humour injected in there, Mr Bean, known to international national audiences so he managed to give Britain something that we could see something we could recognize there in that opening ceremony but at the same time play to the global audience of a billion people around the world watching and I think he'll be remembered for being able to inject the populist element here with a cast of 10,000 volunteers the National Health Service depicted there as well and the sense of humor that we'll remember from this night. And what do you make about the final act, the lighting of the cauldron? As uh, Porek was saying, nobody had a clue about who was going to do it. Here we have seven aspiring young athletes. The prospects, the future, everything embodied in those people. Well, I think it brings home this idea that these really are the people's games. The London chairman, Lord Coe, all they said that these were games that weren't supposed to be corporate. They were supposed to be encapsulating the spirit of East London, the regeneration of an area that the Olympic Stadium and the Olympic site has really managed to galvanise for all of London by choosing seven promising athletes, the hopes that Britain has for them, to have them light the cauldron. It really really brings the games back into the hands of the people. And in terms of all the volunteers who Danny Ball has thanked and who have yeah. made this possible, for people like yourself, just how many hours of practice did you have to do and how did you get chosen? Um, I couldn't count the number of hours we practiced <laughs> um, because um, the schedules would change depending on what needed working on the most. Obviously, from as you saw from the ceremony, some very specialised and extraordinary stuff went on there and obviously that requires specialist training much more rehearsing than what we for example would do but um, we got chosen um, we auditioned back in November December um, mass auditions um, it was advertised in newspapers and I think uh, also through the British fencing website imagine other sports websites as well there was a, a shortage of guys applying <laughs> that's, I have to admit, that's what drew my attention. When I saw the thing originally, I thought, OK, everyone's going to go for it. No point in subscribing. Everyone's going to go for it. It's going to be oversubscribed. No chance. As it turns out, on the male side, at the time it wasn't. And the rest is, well, for me, it's a, a moment that lived with me for the rest of my life. Wow. It's not something I'll never experience again. Well, one 
guy, as you put it. There wasn't a shortage of, obviously, Sir Paul McCartney Absolutely. finishing. Amandeep, just how fantastic. Uh, almost pop royalty in himself. Absolutely. I think Danny Boyle was spoilt tonight. He could have picked a number of stars to close that ceremony, but Sir Paul was the right choice. He had everybody singing along after that firework display. There could be no other person to actually raise the bar even further than Sir Paul. But so many elements tonight, they've surprised us, they've shocked us, they've kept us in awe. And I think it's the idea that he really kept so much of this ceremony under wraps. That um, campaign on the Twitter site saved the surprise. It even brought in the media. The media weren't going to reveal anything that we were privy to because, of course, tonight was a night that the whole world wanted to be surprised. And I believe, Porik, you had to sign a document actually yes. saying that you wouldn't... Wow. Well, Porik Debussy, one of the actual people who were centre stage over there in the Olympic Stadium, thank you very much. And Amity Bangman, who's been reporting on the Olympics, what can I say? What a show. Thank you very much.